All right, good afternoon, everyone. We are ready to set our uh, Committee on Energy, Economic Development, and Tourism hearing underway. It's our three o'clock hearing, and we are in room 224. We have a number of items on the agenda, but sorry, I have to take care of some housekeeping announcements to tell you that uh, this meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants, is being streamed live on YouTube. You will find links to viewing options on all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. So you can watch this hearing all day, every day, free of charge. It's a gift from the state of Hawaii. In the unlikely event that we hear a technical, any kind of technical disturbance or turbulence, and this hearing for some reason takes a nosedive, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at three o'clock on Friday, February 12th. A public notice will be posted on our website. And for those of you participating remotely, all testifiers, audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify. So those are the ground rules and we're gonna get into Senate Bill 963 relating to issuance of special purpose revenue bonds to assist HK management. And first on our testifiers list, we have Craig Hirai, the Director of Budget and Finance has submitted commentary. Kai Lawrence, Chloe Piniza, John Komeji, Matthew Lozano, Jeffrey James, Duke Hashimoto, Teresa Bill have all submitted testimony and support. And we have Keenan Kierman, Kieran, excuse me, who I believe is online to testify. Welcome, Keenan. Well, uh, uh, thank you, Chair and committee members uh, for hearing our bill. Um, we've submitted written testimony in strong support of uh, Senate Bill 963. Uh, standing by our written testimony, our president, Brian Kailana, is doing film work today and unavailable. Um, and I'm here to answer any questions if there are any. Great. Thank you, Keenan. We have Mike McConnell, McMahon, sorry, and Daniel Burris, both in support. Members, any questions for Keenan? Do they have a location? Senator Revere? Aloha. Um, do you have a, a location uh, all set out? Is it? Is it where, where is this meant to be? It says Kalai Law. I'm just curious if, if there's any other details that you have at this time. Yes, Senator, we went through a public process starting in 2018 uh, to get um, site control of a, of a piece of property that's 19.4 acres within HUDA's jurisdiction in uh, Kalai Law. Is it at the beach? Is it? It's a half mile from the beach uh, uh, near the flight line. Okay. Uh, shares a fence with Barbers Point Airfield. Got it. Okay. Thank you. That's all. I just was curious. Thank you. He's going to be your first customer. I can help you right there. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Bissellucci? I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Keenan. All right. Thank you all. You're welcome. Uh -huh. We're moving on to the next bill, SB 1033. Uh, this is regarding the stadium's uh, emergency appropriation. On our testifiers list, we have Scott Champ from the Stadium Authority. <coughs> Uh, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members. Um, my name is Scott Chan. I represent the Stadium Authority. You know, thank you for allowing us to submit testimony regarding Senate Bill 1033. You know, 222, uh, 220 was a very difficult um, year for, for many, and we were not spared either. Um, because of COVID-19, for the very first time in 45 years, we are here to um, seek assistance from you and respectfully request some kind of cash infusion or at least financial relief in order for us to sustain our, our uh, operations. And what I'd like to do, Chair, if I may, uh, introduce our Deputy Manager, Ryan Andrews, who uh, again give him the opportunity to share a little bit more and summarize our testimony further, and assisted by our um, Administrative Services Officer, uh, Russell Uchida. And then we'd be more than happy to answer questions following um, their comments. Sure. Good afternoon, Chair Mackay, Vice Chair Lisa Lucha, and members of the committee. As uh, Manager Chan said, I'm Ryan Andrews, a deputy manager. And just to add to what Manager Chan said, beginning back in March of last year when the COVID-19 restrictions went into effect, the Stadium Authority took strong actions to reduce our expenditures. These actions included laying off our part-time intermittent employees, canceling or reducing uh, the scope and frequency of many of our contracts, and also only processing essential expenses. We've also done our best to be creative in hosting COVID-19 safe events where possible, 
and trying to get our swap meet reestablished at two different periods because there are two different closures. But as you might guess, these efforts don't make up for the income that we would normally generate through major event operations. We are fortunate that we had a very successful 2019, which provided a cash balance that has covered our expenses for many of the past months. I believe you may have copies of our, our budget sheets, and please know that our budget projection analysis that also began last March has been updated monthly, and our written testimony does cover the key assumptions that have gone into those projections. Uh, moving forward, we continue to generate revenue where possible while fully complying with all COVID-19 emergency proclamations and orders. And until these orders are lifted, we will remain vigilant knowing that the preventive measures taken now will lead us to a safer and hopefully quicker recovery. We thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony and strong support of SB 1033. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Uh, that's it on our testifiers list. Members, any questions? Yes, Senator Revere. Thank you. Um, uh, I was curious, uh, so it's one and a half million to emergency appropriation. How, how much is the annual budget and what was cut? I was just curious about the kind of scale of this provision. So our annual budget, I believe I can be corrected, I believe it's about $9 million. 9.3, thank you. And where we cut was, as I mentioned, our, primarily our part-time intermittent employees, which provide a lot of the services here at Aloha Stadium. And then many of our contracts that weren't required in a non-event um, situation. So we either reduce the frequency or we cancel altogether. So you've cut the budget back to, I'm sorry, how much? It was nine, typically, and you're down to what now? Our shortfall we're projecting for this this fiscal year, I believe is $4.6 million. And as I mentioned, we had a cash balance that we started the year with, I believe is about $3.4 million, which has been carrying us. We project that cash balance to be depleted before the end of this fiscal year. So I guess what I'm getting at is if it's a $9 million budget and you've, you've paid everything back, how much are you saving from all those reductions? I should want to be specific with the $9 million is our ceiling, and we generate our own revenue. So it's not as if we're getting your general funds to give us that $9 million. So we started off the year with $3.4 million, and as I mentioned, we did our best to generate revenue throughout the year with whatever types of events we could run, which were limited, as, you, as you're well aware, and then we also reduced our expenses where possible and the events that you run is, is the swap meet and, and what else? Well, we did we did a number of drive-through events this year. We did 43 nights of a Christmas light right. show. We did probably 20 nights of a drive-through haunted house. We did over a dozen uh, supported a dozen different food distribution events. Okay. And then, of course, as you mentioned, the swap meet as well. And there are a few other small events in there as well. We did um, COVID testing as well. You still using the meeting rooms at all in, within the? building within the facility? We have not been able to do to the, the restrictions that are in place. And, and Chair, if, I, if you could uh, allow me just, just a couple more questions. I, I'm just, uh, I never had a chance to f get more details on the, you know, the decision to shut down the football opportunities for the university. Um, and I guess my question is, um, I, I, it's hard for me to envision that if just using the, the ground level, the lowest level of the stadium, if we were limited to that, is that still a safety hazard? I mean, if we just maybe said don't go upstairs, but just use the, the ground floor with a minimal audience, um, is that still unsafe? And how so? Let me, let me, uh, thank you for that question. Let me try to answer that for you. Um, you have to realize that the facility has been sitting idle for almost a year now. And with very little maintenance or any kind of monitoring that needs to take place. And at the very least, we should, um, in order to let uh, occupancy back into the facility, it should go through an assessment, uh, report to the experts, and have some kind of regulatory uh, monitoring that needs to take place in order for us to even consider allowing people back into the stands. Uh, we, we know that Russ never sleeps. Without uh, the work that needs to be done, I would be very concerned 
if we just allow people back in without doing uh, the very least that needs to be done in order to provide a safe environment. And that's the reason why we, we've, uh, the, the, it's unfortunate that the stadium authority had to put in, uh, implement a temporary moratorium um, to not accept any more new events. He, they have directed us not to accept any more new events until further notice using the air bowl, but to maximize our opportunities using the other inventory areas. Um, and please understand that it is far from what, what we really need to run this facility. I mean, we're looking at seven figures, not six figures. Uh, the type of events that we're bringing in is nowhere near what we need to run this and operate this facility. So to, I mean, a, a football game would make, I guess what I'm thinking is university is now looking at spending millions of dollars to buy bleachers for, a, you know, their field. What if they were to pay a couple million bucks to, to spruce up the, the ground level there and just have minimal seating at the stadium? Wouldn't that generate revenue for you and um, allow them a place where they could play a college game? Well, I, I, you know, I, I would, um, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to, to answer on behalf of the university, but I, I do know that we still have to work within the restrictions, and that was some of the challenge that we had with some of their non suited up players and our working staff. I'm not sure that pencils out. That was that's something that they would have to look at to see if um, that would make sense to allow people back in and what would those numbers be? Because we, we are still operating under the restriction at this point in time. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank Chair, you. I have a question. Senator Misalichio. Okay, Scott, in your testimony, you indicated that um, you're hoping that the subsidy would carry you through December of 2021, right? And at which point you said that you hope that there would be less restrictive, more positive post-COVID-19 environment. So um, I'd like to quote the chair. He always says this, hope is not a strategy. So I'm wondering if you already have a vision or some plan how you could carry forth and generate the necessary revenues so that at the end of December 2021, you're not coming back to the legislature for additional monies. I'll go ahead and try to address this question. It's a very good question. I want to be very specific though. First of all, this emergency request is to get us through this fiscal year. Correct. The 2.5 that we're asking in the biennium is to get us through December, as you mentioned. We do have, and of course, we do hope that the environment for rent events is much better by then, but as you said, hope isn't something that we should hang our hat on. So we do have um, a strategic plan in place right now to really expand operations of our parking lot, which in the past we haven't been able to do because we've had to reserve parking for major events such as UH. Now knowing that right now we have kind of a clean slate, we can start entertaining more events in the parking lot and growing our swap meet as well, which has been our biggest revenue source for decades. So for instance, hosting things like larger uh, craft fairs, we have, a, a, for instance, a drive-in concert starting this Sunday. So doing uh, activities like that. So, so as, a, as well as we are doing our best to try and um, close that gap, lessen the gap, but there is no guarantees because as you know, they're all rough estimates. I do know though, if we don't reach those um, target numbers, there is no other opportunity. Uh, we will have to shut operations down. So we can't speculate whether or not we will have that money other than this process that we have in front of us. And um, I just, I don't want to get to a point where we run out of money and there's no way of us operating. And I, I can't provide any guarantees. We're doing our best to maximize the other inventory areas under the conditions that we, uh, we are under to make it work. And whatever numbers that we can provide, the less is the number that we need to ask for, that, that is all that our goal and our intent. Okay. As long as you're mindful that such a plan is in place, I think that's what we want, that reassurance. Thank you. Well, we're, we're, we're definitely being innovative and creative. Um, we're really concentrating on several events. We're looking at drive-through uh, concert, I mean, uh, driving concerts, we're looking at craft fairs, we're looking at um, events that will enhance the swap meet that's staring us right in the face that would be a great opportunity for us to increase revenue there. Um, we're also working with 
and it may not be an um, revenue opportunity, but we're also entertaining thought of the vaccine uh, distribution with uh, those involved. Uh, we're looking at still food distribution. So we're, you know, graduations, the rental cars that helped um, substantially earlier, but we're trying to be very uh, innovative in terms of what we bring to our facility and think outside the box. Sounds good, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for thinking outside the stadium, uh, <laughs> Scott. I have a couple of questions with regard to the ask here. So from what I remember in your board meetings, if you get no new cash infusion, you're gonna run out of money in March of this year, correct? Well, it's at the end of the fiscal year. Uh, you know, if our projections hold and the environment doesn't change or it doesn't turn to the worst, I guess we could run out before that. Our rough estimates show us that we'll run out of our, uh, we'll, our cash balance will be in jeopardy. And we just want to make sure that we don't get to that point. Uh, we're hoping that what we do now will carry us even further. Okay, let me just, sorry, I don't want to be a doomsday, but like if you have no help from the legislature, come end of fiscal year, come end of June of this year, what does that mean? You just shut it in place and walk away? Or, or what, what happens if, if you don't get any kind of assistance? Well, I would hate to say that, but that's the only alternative that I know. It's, we're going to have to shut down. There's no other way for us to pay for our ex, uh, expenditure, our expenses. No, that's terrible. Because of COVID-19, there's no opportunity for us to bring in large events, which is a, a major part of generating revenue for us. And it's been almost 10 months that we, we, we're unable to do that. Okay. And then... Is he talking about in the stadium, the large events? Yeah, large events outside the stadium. Correct? I mean, your, your revenue opportunities are outside the stadium. Well, it's within the property, but outside the facility. Well, we're still, we're still trying to um, maximize our use within the, the, some of the areas that we can. If it, it allows us to do that. So okay. nothing would be within the stadium. Yeah, so go ahead. So nothing, nothing will, will occur within the stadium itself. And so I just want to be clear on that because you guys have deemed it unsafe. Or would you have some events in the stadium? No, that is not, that's not accurate. We cannot have uh, occupancy of the stadium. We can have people on the field, not in the stands at this point. So that's how we were able to operate the Uni University of Hawaii games this year. And the Hula Bowl. And the Hula Bowl as well. And potentially we might be doing the same with some graduation ceremonies that get then streamed out into a, you know, a podcast or a, on a screen. But there's no the chance field. that you could do the UH football games um, if there were no fans in the stands. Um, could you still do a football game there? Yes, we could. Yes. So, okay. so if you ask right now, under the situ uh, what we know today, the answer to that is yes. We, we can still do that. In fact, we're even contemplating when the high school can come back this year if they decide to, and we're, we're having those conversations as well. But if, if people wanted to be in the stands, that's where you draw the line and say that they cannot well, be? Because we, we feel that we, at the very least, we need to do uh, the assessment report first, so let the experts be the judge of that. And did they, they did render a report? that said it was unsafe? They have, but that's, they, they have uh, said it too, but part of our request for the biennium is because we don't have that money to um, to uh, implement that program, we're, we're asking for that money as well to try and see if we get that uh, monitoring and assessment done. So I, I'm sorry, just not, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't follow, the, I don't know the answer to this. So there was a report that deemed it unsafe or due to lack of funds without a report You've deemed it unsafe. I'm sh which, how did this come to be? There was a report that says the work that needs to be done at our facility that needs to be addressed. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm still confused as well. The, I, was, I from what I heard, what thought I heard you say, Scott, you want to do an assessment to make sure that the stadium as currently uh, standing is safe but you haven't done the assessment for this year, correct? Correct. And how much would that assessment cost? We have, we're making a request for $600 per biennium, level for the biennium coming out, 300 per year. Wait, $600? Well, 300, 300,000 uh, for the uh, oh, first year thousand. biennium. They have, yeah, they have extra. Okay, sorry, I thought you said $600, like, wow. Well, 
I'd cut you a check. Uh, okay, six hundred thousand. Sorry, I don't have that much money. Uh, so six hundred thousand dollars to do an assessment, and then if the assessment comes out clean, you can have all cut graduations, football games, other things on the field itself, or is this assessment where the fans can be put into the stands? Well, well, I think you need to understand too, Senator, that. You know, the caveat to that is the report can come back and find more things that need to be done. That's the, that's that's our concern. Um, it's not to reassure us that it, it, there's a possibility, but it can also tell us that there's more work to be done that's going to cost more time and money. And as we all know, as I stated earlier, Russ never sleeps. And if we've done very little in terms of monitoring and maintenance on the facility, I, I, I'm only saying as the manager, I think at the very least, we should have at least uh, the, the experts get in there and, and, and make sure that everything's okay. Okay. And, okay. Uh, and uh, our deputy manager has some uh, other comments to make. I'll provide a little context. So the last full assessment was in 2018. And in 2018, as you may recall, there was a whole laundry list of, of areas that needed to be addressed. Three were considered critical items that had to be addressed within a 20 more, 24 month period. And unfortunately, 24 months have come and gone and those items weren't, weren't funded and weren't repaired, so they exist today. And as uh, Manager Jan mentioned, this place sitting vacant also for an entire year almost, we need to have another assessment done to really see what kind of progression has taken place before we can safely allow people back in this facility. I got you, so you've, there's a plus and minus assessment might come back really terrible, um, and that would be bad. But the assessment could come out that, oh, you just need some cosmetic fixes here, and then we can open up for fans, right? That's, that's, that's what the assessment in the best case scenario and worst case scenario could show. I think you're a little optimistic. Two of those items that were in that, that 2018 assessment were significant structural items that have to be addressed. Okay. So, so there's, a, there's an amount of work that has to be done, and then if we get it reassessed, we run the risk of learning even more about the facility and additional items that could be identified. Got it. So we should pretty much have this mindset that if we're gonna ever use a stadium itself, it will only be for on-field activities. Don't ever think that we're gonna put fans in the bleachers, correct? Without a significant amount of investment. That is correct. Okay, so going back to the Senator Revere's questions about UH football. If we were to live in the kind of COVID approach that we did in last season, UH could play their games there with no fans, but you know, fulfill their TV contracts uh, on, on the field this year as well as next year, as well as potentially 2023 as well, correct? That is correct that this coming year we could do the same way we did it this past year without fans. Okay, okay, thank you. Members, any further questions? No, I'm good. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, members, we're going to move on to the next bill. That is uh, Senate Bill 1053, relating to Hawaii community-based economic development, technical, and financial assistance. On our testifiers list, we have Mike McCartney from DBED, or, oh, there's Chunk. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Chung Chang here for Mike McCartney, the Director. Uh, DBS signs on his written testimony in strong support of uh, Senate Bill uh, 1053. Thank you. Thank you, Chung. And we have testimony from Eric Abe. He's from the Hawaii Primary Care Association in support. Members, any questions of uh, Chung? No. no. Okay, thank you, Chung. We're going to move on to our next bill, which is. Senate Bill 927 relating to taxation. First on our testifiers list, we have uh, Len Higashi from HTDC. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair. Uh, HTDC stands on our written testimony offering comments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Len. Isaac Choi, Director of DOTAX. Good afternoon, Mark. On behalf of Isaac Choi in the Department of Taxation, the department will stand on written testimony offering comments. We do note that this measure is limited to residents and therefore may uh, violate the U.S. Constitution. Thank you. I'd oh, be happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Okay, small problem. Okay. <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> Thank you. 
Kristen Sakamoto, Deputy Attorney General, has submitted commentary. Tom Yamachika, Tax Foundation, has submitted commentary. And Jeffrey Hong from Techmana has submitted commentary. Uh, members, any questions of uh, LEM or DOTAX? No? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. We're going to move on to our next bill, that is Senate Bill 1058, relating to the Hawaii Film and Creative Industries Development Special Fund. On a testifier's list, we have Chung Chang from DBET. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, Chung here again uh, for SB 1058, the department strongly supports um, and uh, will be available here um, for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chung. Uh, that's it for testifiers. Any questions of Chung, members? No? Chung, I just have a clarifying question. This is a bill that will allow proceeds from the revenues from the film office, or not film office, but the film studio in Diamond Head to be put into the special fund instead of the general fund. Is that what this bill is about? Uh, thank you, Chair, for that question. I'm, I'm going to ask um, uh, Georgia our CID administrator to, to help answer that question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chung. Thank you, Chair, members of the committee. Uh, yes, uh, in, it's intended actually currently for the uh, Kalailoa property. We know that there would be an impact for the Hawaii Film Studio facility as it does go directly to the general fund. So that would uh, actually be uh, separated out. We could certainly clarify that language in, the, uh, in any kind of amendments going forward. Okay, got it. Thank you. Members, any further questions? Okay. okay, thank you, Georgia. Thank you, Chung. We're going to move on to the last bill on the agenda. That is uh, Senate Bill 921 relating to taxation. On our testifiers list, we have uh, Donnie Dawson from DBED. Aloha, Chair, members of the committee. Um, thank you for the opportunity to testify. Uh, DBED stands on its comments, uh, its written comments regarding this measure, and I'm available to answer any questions that uh, any of the committee may have. Good. Thank you, Donnie. Uh, Isaac Choi from DOTAX. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, member of the committee, Titin Sakata on behalf of Department of Taxation. We stand on our written testimony providing comments available for questions. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We have Cynthia Johiro, from Deputy Attorney General, has submitted commentary. Bruce Copa from the Motion Picture Association of America has submitted testimony opposition. Sandy Wong for Island Film Group. Is Sandy Wong around? Sandy, they're not present. Oh, okay, Sandy's not there. Uh, Tom Yamachika from the Tax Foundation. Is Tom around? Sandy, they're not present. Okay, no Tom. And we have Vilea Constantinao from the Honolulu Film Office has submitted commentary. Members, any questions of uh, DOTAX or Donnie Dawson? No? Okay. Thank you, members. Um, we're going to go into a brief recess for decision making. Thank you for your patience. We're reconvening our EET committee hearing from our, on our three o'clock agenda to contemplate six bills. The first one is Senate Bill 963. This is a spur for that cool surf park in uh, Kapolei. And uh, recommendation is to pass this measure as is. Any discussion? If not, Senator Ms. Lucia, I vote yes. Sure. Um, Committee on Energy, Economic Development, and Tourism related to Senate Bill 963, Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye, Chris Lee excuse, Senator Revere. Aye. Senator Fabella. Aye. The aye. recommendations adopted, Chair. Surf is up, thank you. Um, on to uh, where surf is down, Senate Bill 1033 relating to the Hawaii 
stadium authority and they're desired for $1.5 million. Um, oh, members, uh, we heard the sad state of affairs for the stadium and we would certainly want to give it an opportunity to come back to, to not come back to life, just remain alive. Um, but I know some of us do have some concerns about what exactly is the strategy and the revenue opportunities. So um, would anyone care to share their thoughts on uh, the stadium situation? Oh, Senator yeah. Revere. Sure. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have real concerns about the, uh, the direction of this. If they're losing money and they're going to continue to lose money and there's no way out, then maybe we should cut the losses now uh, would be one thought. Um, on the other hand, I, I would like to see it succeed. I think we all would. So I, I'm not opposed to uh, giving money to, to give them the, the bridge through, but I'm very disappointed with the, the it seems to be lack of creativity for getting the, the high school and the college football games back in the stadium. Um, uh, they, they mentioned uh, activities outside in the parking lot, you know, the, uh, the drive-through Christmas thing, the, the swap meet, things like that. But I think if they used a little creativity, maybe they could have, for an example, big screen TVs in the parking lot during UH football games in the stadium, limit the number of people in the stadium to whatever is safe and appropriate but they're going to receive the parking revenue. They're going to have a tailgate. They'll have an event. Of course, this is all subject to um, uh, a healthy society that, that it, it can occur. But I, I believe we're on the right track in this state to have a healthful uh, environment by the fall. So I, uh, you know, I'll support your recommendation on this, but I just really wanted to, I want to make a statement to the stadium authority that I really think they need to do more to try to accommodate the, uh, the football programs and possibly the high school graduations, as was mentioned. And there's things that they, we've come to rely on that stadium for. And these are the folks that are re, they're responsible for that. They're responsible for the people. They're not just responsible for their own jobs. They're responsible for providing that public facility for the, the needs of the public. And, and I'm, not, I'm not confident that they're um, looking at it in, as, as earnestly and, and passionately as I think they should. So I'd like to send that message. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Anyone else with comments? I echo his sentiments. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we all want to see the stadium do better, but and I, I think the staff there has tried to turn over every possible stone, but yes, there could be some creative outlets that uh, uh, will provide them the revenues that they need to keep that place alive. And so in the committee report, um, Senator Revere, we take your recommendation, and we're just going to put in the committee report that we'd like to see the stadium work more closely with uh, the University of Hawaii to figure out what exactly is the plan to make sure that both of them are able to, uh, uh, I was going to say thrive, but it's kind of hard to thrive in this COVID environment, but really try to expand opportunities uh, rather than have these two options, build at Cook Field, should we do it at the stadium? As a community, we got to figure out like what exactly is the right path for us to take. So actually, going back to the committee report, we'll just encourage the University of Hawaii and the stadium authority to work out uh, to the best of their ability an agreement on the future of football at uh, Aloha Stadium. But the recommendation for SB 1033 is to pass with the uh, technical amendments. Members, any discussion? Yeah. Senator Misilucho, I vote sure. yes. Committee on Energy, Economic Development, and Tourism. As regards mm -hmm. to SB 1033, Chair recommends pass this measure with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes with reservations. Uh, Senator Lee is excused. Senator Revere. Reservations. Senator Fabella. No. Uh, recommendation is adopted, Chair. Okay, we got out of there with one leg on. Okay, Senate Bill 1053, relating to the Hawaii Community-Based Economic, uh, this is a seabed program. Uh, we heard testimony, or read testimony, about how it's really, this bill helps expand the benefits of the seabed program. So, recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Members, any discussion? Tech amendments. Oh, I'm sorry, with tech amendments. 
if having heard no discussion, Senator Misilcio, I vote yes. Senate Bill 1053, Chair recommends to pass this measure with tech amendments. Are there any reservations? Any nays? Yeah, uh, the measure is adopted. Okay, thank you, members. Uh, we're on to our next measure, uh, Senate Bill 927, relating to taxation. Uh, this is the bill that uh, will hopefully help us lure more technologists here and uh, go after the very rich technologists that decide to come to our beautiful islands to live. But uh, there is a constitutional problem, so we're going to take care of that constitutional problem with regard to residency by on uh, deleting on page one, lines 15 and 16, de delete any residency requirement language there. But uh, so the suggestion is to pass this measure with that amendment. Members, any discussion? If not, Senator Misilich, I vote yes. SB 927, the chair recommends to pass this measure with amendments. Chair votes aye, vice chair votes aye. Senator Lee, six Q. Senator Revere. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Your motion or your measure is adopted, Chair. Thank you. We're on to Senate Bill 1058, relating to the Hawaii Film and Creative Industries Development Special Fund. Uh, this is the bill that will allow for revenues both from the Diamond Hit Studio as well as a Kalailoa film uh, hangar to be have uh, those funds go into this, this special fund rather than into the general fund. So the recommendation is to pass this measure with uh, technical non-substantive amendments. Members, any discussion? If not, Senator Bissilucha, I vote yes. Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism as regards to Senate Bill 1058, the chair recommends passing this measure with amendments. Chair votes aye, vice chair votes aye. Senator Lee, six Q, Senator Riviere. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Your recommendations adopted, Chair. Great, thank you, members. We're on the last bill, that is Senate Bill 921 relating to taxation. Now this is a bill that uh, will hurt the, an industry that is actually growing this year due to Hawaii being a great place and safe place to do films and also people's insatiable appetite for wanting more content. So Hawaii is actually uh, seeing its best year ever. And so I'd like to delete all the language in this bill except for on page eight, line 11. Right now, each production can have up to 15, one five million dollars in production uh, credits, and I'm gonna reduce that number to 12 million, just so we can allow more people to avail themselves to this $50 million tax credit. And I think that the public deserves to know who is getting a tax credit and how much of a tax credit uh, they're getting. We're not gonna go into all the details as to who they hired and all the vendors, but just those two uh, requirements are gonna be placed on DBED to file a public disclosure, identifying the name of the taxpayer who received the tax credit and the total amount of the tax credit uh, received. So those are the two substantive amendments to this particular measure. Members, any discussion? If not, Senator Misilucci, I vote yes. Senate Bill 921, Chair recommends to pass it with substantive amendments. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Lee, excuse, Senator Riviere. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Your recommendations adopted, Chair. Fantastic, so as they say in the film industry, that's a wrap. <laughs>